that there is over 480 movies and series in Spanish on Netflix? Let me tell you that there's a whole universe beyond La Casa de Papel and Narcos. Welcome to this video. My name is Melina and I'm here to recommend you the best shows in Spanish on Netflix. But before we start, I think you should know that we are a learning language platform that also uses real TV shows, music, movies and series to teach new languages. In order to pick up slangs, useful phrases, pronunciation and improve your vocabulary while watching TV, Lingapod has multiple tools like dual subtitles, flashcards, quizzes, private classes with tutors and much more. Ahora sí, let's start with Spanish shows on Netflix. Elite. This popular choice is one of the best shows to learn Spanish on Netflix. It concerns three students from disadvantaged backgrounds who gain entrance to an elite school. It's a mystery thriller high school drama that will have you wanting to binge watch the whole season. Especially once the twist in the first series is revealed. You can find here lots of opportunities to get familiar with the vosotros form of verb conjugation. This can be difficult to explain in textbooks. But actually hearing it is a great way of learning both how and when to use this form. The series is perfect for general Spanish practice too, and you will hear plenty of examples of fun Spanish slang. Vis a vis. Brilliant and brutal Vis a vis, one of the best on Netflix. This one tells the story of Macarena, who, as a result of trusting the wrong person, finds herself thrown in jail where she encounters a host of very different and dangerous characters. The show is a rich source of Spanish phrases, words and slang, and also allows the viewer to hear a range of Spanish accents. Pero, amigo, amiga, if you really want to learn Spanish while watching TV, you should definitely take a look at lengapies.com. We place the focus on having fun and interactivity because we strongly believe that learning another language should be a rewarding and entertaining undertaking. Have you heard about Antes de Perder? This Spanish comedy that you can find in our platform can be watched in one day. Two 30-something very different women decide to jump into the road a la Bonnie and Clyde. It is a show with only seven episodes of around 15 minutes each. Great for your Spanish learning routine. Now, getting back to Netflix, let's continue with Rebelde. This one is set in the Elite Way School, a prestigious private boarding school on the outskirts of Mexico City. This telenovela meets all the expectations of a teen-oriented drama, with an appealing cast that has some pretty good chemistry of bad. What I appreciate here is that the characters are real musicians. If you're in the beginning of your language learning journey, starting with cartoons is one of the best ways to catch up a new language. Let me recommend you Osvaldo, also from Lingapai. Follow the maddening misadventures of Osvaldo, a naive and dreamy 12-year-old penguin, and his immense ability to turn the simplest situations of life into epic journeys. Jumping back to Netflix, Club de Cuervos, translated as Club of Crawls. Comedy show that centers on a pair of siblings who inherit their father's soccer club. The show was scripted by both American and Mexican writers and has been generally very well received by critics. Perfect for effortlessly learning Spanish and for practicing your Mexican slang. Committing to a few episodes a day of Club de Cuervos is a great start to your New Year resolution to get speaking Spanish. Next, 
La Casa de las Flores, The House of Flowers. This Mexican dark comedy follows the wealthy and dysfunctional De La Mora family, who owns a prestigious flower shop and a struggling cabaret, both called The House of Flowers. Known as the millennial telenovela, the show explores many of the hypocrisies within modern Mexican society, while also featuring several LGBTQ plus characters and storylines. Build your Spanish language muscles while relaxing in front of this seriously addictive series that follows the fortunes of a rich and famous family that aren't all they seem. ¿Quién mató a Sara? Who killed Sara? This one is also Mexican, but a crime drama. Alex lived happily as a young man until his sister Sara was killed and a rich family manipulated him into taking the fall. When he is released, after 18 years in prison, Alex is hell-bent on using his tech and explosive expertise to find out who killed Sara. Madre solo hay dos, daughter from another mother, great family show and performers. Portraits life in Latin American social differences while giving a magic twist in which two people of different social and economical status support each other. It has also a subtle inclusion of the LGBTQ community while not just forcing it on the audience. La Cocinera de Castamar, the cook of Castamar, travel all the way back to 70s, 20s of Madrid, deep in this beautiful, well-written period piece that highlights integrity and forbidden loves, social class taboos, and classy drama with outstanding cinematography to take you into the world of Castamar. After developing agoraphobia following the death of her father, Clara becomes a cook for the widowed Duke of Castamar, who has just returned to society after his pregnant wife's death. The two eventually begin a worthy love story. Las Chicas del Cable, Cable Girls. This show, nominated for a Platino Award in the category of Best TV Series, is a historical drama set in the 90s 20s. Located in Madrid, tells the true story of four women fighting for gender equality as employees of Spain's first national telephone company. If you're enjoying this content, please give us a thumb up before we get to the last, but not least, Altamar, High Seas. With an Agatha Christie style, post-World War II, Spanish aristocrats and crew members on a luxury cruise get entangled in a murder mystery. Two sisters discover some very disturbing family secrets aboard a ship sailing from Spain to Brazil. Wonderful series with a great soundtrack. Mm -hmm.